Hey, did you guys see that short I put up where my gun bounced off the couch and fell onto the floor, thus, you know, dropping a $1,200 Kimber onto the floor? Technically $1,400 Kimber because my Kimber has uh, upgraded sights, but uh, yeah, um, it didn't feel good when I did it. That's why I paused and looked like an idiot, but uh, I'll just show you. Um, Thank you guys for those that were concerned and left me messages, but yeah, it, it's fine. It's just I, I scratched the finish when it landed on the floor because the way it was sitting in my holster was unprotected there, which was unfortunate, but it is what it is. I'm not too worried. This is a carry and a shooter, so um, in case you didn't notice, I also upgraded my sights. Uh, the fiber optics, I changed them. They were dull. Anywho. That's not the point of today's video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on that. Uh, what I have today is this guy's little cousin. And by little cousin, boy, do I mean little cousin. I mean, it's barely as long as this thing is tall. This, if you didn't know, is the SIG P238 fingerprint magnet. Okay, the fingerprint magnet is because of the finish, but this is the 238. It was a very popular lineup of single stack 380 ACP 1911-esque guns. I uh, call the, um, what were those called? The Mustang 380s were basically the same gun, and I know Browning makes one as well. But these guys have been in production for a long-ass time. Um, pretty reliable guns. The only downside is in today's world, single stack just isn't enough. There's tons of, including the 365 and 380, which is like a 14 round, 12 round uh, gun. But digress, if you're a 1911 guy, if you're an all metal guy, that's a big thing. The only all metal guns that are about this same size would be the Smith & Wesson CSX and maybe one other one. Um, PPKs and stuff are actually bigger than this guy, but today we're talking about this one. As you can also see, this one has a beautiful finish on it. Borrowing this one from Daniel from Liberty Arms. Check out Liberty Arms. Google them, Harrisonburg, Virginia. I'm not allowed to link them because, you know, reasons. But this is a all-metal gun, alloy frame, real rosewood grips. That's a beautiful coloring on those rosewood grips. I'm probably going to stain my... Uh, uh, Bingham Squire, Squire Bingham, uh, rose gold or rosewood, that same color. But as you can see, the fingerprint magnet portion of this thing is just gorgeous. Looks like a burned metal. They call it a rainbow titanium, but it's gorgeous. You can see even like the grip screws, any metal uh, screws or pins or anything that go through the gun are all that coloring. Pretty nice. Has a extended magnet on this one so I can get my whole hand on it, which is, in my opinion, a little bit of a downside to a lot of these little guys, but that's also because I'm six foot four and I have big giant gorilla hands. Uh, single action only, just like a 1911. However, you will see outside of the grip safety, which is very definitive, and it's your standard up for safe, down for fire, uh, it does not have a grip safety on it. grip safety. This one does not because it uses a completely different fire control group, which we'll take a look at when we pop the top off. But it is still single action and it is hammer fired. Uh, here, let me show you the trigger pull. It's about six and a quarter pounds, I believe, on my scale. And it's not bad. Now, it's not 1911 crisp because it is not a 1911 trigger. This is more like a browning trigger, browning high power trigger. You'll see again when we take the top off, the reset is right back out to where it breaks and then goes right into the next shot. The follow-up shots are very nice and easy to get. It does have night sights on it, which is probably for the best because with that super shiny top, this thing's probably a nightmare in bright light situations. I mean, you can just see it looks fake the way it's just shining, reflecting all that light. Uh, the trade markings are subtle, which is nice. Uh, they're easily readable at the right angle, invisible in others. And again, I like how all the switches and the mag release, everything except the trigger, the hammer, and the ejection or chamber of the barrel are all the same color, which is really nice. Hopefully this is all staying in focus. The phone I'm using had an Android 12 update and it's caused some issues. So let's go ahead and pop the top off, take a look at it. In order to do that, you open it up, make sure there's nothing in it. Yep. Yep, you will notice that unlike a standard 1911, I would normally be doing that and taking a bushing tool to the front, but this is a bushingless system. Good noise. But you can just go ahead and drop that down because all you're going to do to take this one apart is bring it back to the takedown notch, which is still in the factory position. And when you do, you're just going to 
kind of plop out. The takedown lever. Pull the lever, crunk. Yeah, which lever? But once you do that, you will see that the top will come right off. Very much Glock-ish, newer gun-ish, striker fire-ish, gun-ish, even though this is a hammer fire gun. But all you got to do is take your guide rod and shoot it across your couch. I was about to say it's non-captive, so be careful of that. And uh, I have to stand up for a second. Because it just fell down the hole. A uh, very small guide rod for a very small gun. This spring does not have a closed end on it, so it doesn't matter which end it goes back in. And then you have your tiny itty bitty barrel. I believe that's a uh, two knuckle barrel. This being the United States of America, we don't actually measure correctly, although they measure it from the back of the chamber. So technically this is a three inch barrel. Taking a look at the inside of the slide, this gun has been fired. That's why I was not afraid to rack it. If you see looking down the front there, uh, inside the breech face, it does have quite a bit of buildup in there. Uh, this titanium finish they use is amazing. Uh, for Even if it has 50 rounds in it, it's not showing anywhere. I believe it's got more than that, though. The guy that traded it in actually shoots his guns, which if you're carrying a gun for self-protection and you don't shoot it, get a different gun. Get one you're not afraid to use. I believe that's exactly what he did. He traded up uh, the frame. Again, alloy, very light. Mm -hmm. Probably weighs about the same as the barrel, to be honest with you. Uh, as you can see looking down there, you see it's completely different from a 1911. 1911 has a straight pull back to a rear mainspring housing, which houses the uh, sear and everything which goes vertically up into a face here. This one just has a release down here inside the grip area which then releases the hammer there's no drop safety on this one so that's nice it does preserve a little bit of the trigger feel on it but otherwise it's completely different from a 1911 inside has a ejector that needs to go down for reassembly keep that in mind otherwise you're going to jam it but because you don't have a bushing and a plunger you actually have two fewer parts for field stripping this is it this gun is field stripped ready to clean in our case we're going to reassemble it take your barrel flip it so that the chamber is facing the top or bottom of the slide as we're holding it here. Take your guide rod, put the spring back on it. Now here's a trick, because if you try to put it in the way it's supposed to be in C2 or inside the gun or in place, uh, it's going to not go in. So what you need to do is uh, fight with it a bit. Call it weird names like Brenda, even though it's not a Brenda, obviously. It's a... Uh, it's a pain in the ass, but it's not named Brenda. I, I knew a Brenda once. She was just a really bad person. Make sure that your spring doesn't bind up because that can be an issue too. I'm sorry I'm doing this a little bit off camera. This is a very tight spring, but uh, here I'll try to get back on camera. So when you push it in, the front of the guide rod has to go in to the hole there. There you go. But as you can see, the guide rod is actually upside down from the way it's supposed to be sitting. That's the only way you're going to get it in there because these two little tabs sticking down will block the guide rod from going forward enough to drop it into place. What you have to do now, and of course I bit my nails off because I'm a nervous biter, is spin the guide rod while you're holding it in place. Which, again, pain in the ass, but it is doable if you're just a little bit patient. Once you've done that, you'll see it's back in its correct orientation. And I hope this is all staying in focus. Take your slide, take your frame, slider back on. Make sure that the guide rod is not in the wrong position because it also has to go in there. So make sure that you're centered, sitting right. Everything has to be in the right position. Make sure your ejector is down. There you go. Once you've done that, go ahead and bring the slide lock slide release, put it in place. Now there is no plunger that you have to miss again. That plunger usually has a detent in it that these guys have to go by. This does not have that, so just pick it up, swivel it over, hold it in place while you pull the slide back to the takedown notch. Once you get it in place, and it's stuck, of course, because, again, my hands are not that great. I do apologize. Forgive me. Forgive me, Grandma. Once you have it in place, it should drop right back in. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump you there, but it'll drop right back in. You just release it and make sure you have functionality.
What do I think of micro guns like this? Well, they're fun. By micro, I mean a gun I can hide behind my hand. They're fun. If you're looking for something lighter weight, they're good. Something lighter capacity uh, is questionable, but I mean, you got six plus one plus an extra mag, so you can carry 13 rounds, which it's only one less than a factory 1911 can carry. This one can carry eight plus one, but normally they're seven plus one. So yeah, it's it's not a whole lot of a difference. If you have to reload that many times while using a pocket gun, you're probably in a lot more trouble than you want to admit. Um, if you're looking for a 238, Liberty Arms can get them. Just give them a call. Say, hey, I'm looking for one. Not sure if the rainbow titanium is always available. But there's plenty of colors available. FDE, black, silver, stainless, chrome. All those colors are available. If you like the fingerprint magnet one, just let them know. Uh, they can always keep their eyes open for you. Bonus to doing this on a couch is they can just do that and wipe the fingerprints off. Yeah! So check out Liberty Arms. Let me know what you think down below. Leave a comment, leave a like, leave a subscribe. Go over to TikTok, sign up, same name. That way you can hear me actually cuss more. Uh, I have to take this out to the range since I put the new grips on it and upgraded the fiber optics with better fiber optics. And yeah, that's it. So I'm out of here. Have a nice day. Joe's signing off. Joe, 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 signing off. And as always, I'll talk to you later.